Howard Stern is a tool. Howard Stern, the guy that invented the shock jock genre of radio, one time self-proclaimed king of all media, now he is just nothing more than an old man has been sellout who sold out for the big money that he's making through Sirius XM. And now instead of being one of those that used to challenge the establishment, challenge the established narrative, he is now the talking points for the narrative. Personally, I have never liked Howard Stern. He, of course, came to uh, national prominence back during his days on New York Radio on WNBC. Well known that uh, Don Imus didn't like him. But um, he invented that whole shock jock genre. I'm a radio guy. I still do radio. I do a daily talk show that deals with politics, pop culture, and religion. I do a weekly 1960s Top 40 radio show. I do a weekly Christian program that is a sermon content-driven format. I do a weekly syndicated two hours of original era rock and roll, 1950s, pre-Beatles, 1960s. It's fanned out to a couple of dozen stations around the country. I love radio. I've done every genre, talk, country, rock, Christian. I've done it all except hip hop. And I've never been into the whole shock jock genre because in reality, Stern turned to that because he was wretched as just a regular jock playing records, doing an intro, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't hit the post if his life depended on it. Uh, and so, you know, he started bringing strippers on the air and describing to the audience and letting the microphones be turned up as they inserted objects into their feminine body parts. I mean, this was the Howard Stern show. When he went to television, you know, he had the cast of Gilligan's Island on there. Uh, uh, what was his name? Bob Denver, the guy that had the, the uh, I'm sure I've got the name wrong, uh, who, who did the, the lead as Gilligan and the one that played uh, Marianne. You know, he had them smoking tampons on television. You know, Howard Stern is a pig, and for whatever reason, there is this thing within our pop culture, especially those who are politicians or in Hollyweird or in the entertainment industry, because everybody from presidential contenders to Donald Trump when he was with The Apprentice to uh, even Megyn Kelly when she was over at Faux Pas News, formerly known as Fox News, they all go on this guy's show. And I, I don't understand it, other than the fact, okay, he's got an audience, but I just, why this degenerate pig has ever been taken serious on any level is beyond me. But now, of course, he is just incensed that the mask mandates are being lifted. You get all these wackos with their anti-mask, anti-vaccine. The reason they lifted these mask mandates is because we gave into a small minority of people who are completely out of their minds, who think masks are some sort of prison sentence and their freedoms are being taken away. And then Stern went on to also say that he really feels if you haven't gotten vaccinated, you should not be allowed into a hospital to receive treatment. And again, this just shows you what an absolute tool, an uneducated buffoon Howard Stern is. Okay, it is not, number one, a minority of people who, who don't want to be masked. It is beyond, over-the-top, groundswell, vast majority of Americans who are done with this. Anthony Fauci even admits this. He's lamenting it as he admits it, but he admits that that ship has sailed and that if we have to reintroduce mitigation circumstances, it's going to be hard and hope people are just being ready to be flexible if I decree the next variant to mean we got to put the plexiglass back up and put the mask back on. You know, that's, 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 
Fauci's preventative counsel. And then, of course, he only has one diagnosis that he gives repeatedly. Get the jab, get the jab, get the jab, get the jab. Get the double jab, get the booster jab. Get the double, triple, quadruple booster jab. This is all Fauci's got, and he's got it for two reasons. Say what you want. There is a big pharma connection to all of it, but Dr. Fauci himself, and I think RFK Jr. is absolutely right on this point, um, there, was, there, was, there was beginning to become a growing sense, even within the government, that all this funding that gets poured into groups like, well, Fauci's was, why are we doing this? We, we, the, the, the overwhelming world population is... is is stronger, is healthier, and there have been all these incredible scientific and medical breakthroughs. And Fauci, since the AIDS epidemic, has been attempting to manufacture pandemics so he could be relevant, so he could be viable, so he could not only continue getting funding, but he really is a narcissist, and he absolutely is a media whore who loves the attention, loves the spotlight. Therefore, in his mind, this can never go away. And I'm not saying that this is contrived, but it has become a pandemic. In the other words, there were those that saw this as a way of, for whatever reason, gaining control over people, limiting of rights, suppression, etc. And for uh, um, individuals like Anthony Fauci to be the be-all, end-all, he is like the sole guy that gets to make all of these decisions and it's, it's, it's ridiculous. The mandates are being lifted. And again, they're being lifted because the cases are way down. The fatalities are way down. The hospitalizations are way down. We are at numbers pre-pandemic. And even if with the next variant there is an uptick, even Dr. Fauci acknowledges that it doesn't look like it's going to be that serious when it comes to, quote, complications due to people's health. In other words, what some of us have been screaming for two and a half years is now being acknowledged. We are reaching that level of herd immunity. The virus has done what viruses do. It is mutated, 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 mutated. Each time it mutates, it spreads even faster than it did before. But in order to mutate, I'll, I'll even throw in a secular term here. As it evolves, each time it evolves, it knocks life out of itself. It can, it can change quicker, it can adapt quicker, but each time it varies itself, each time it goes into a metamorphosis of change, it makes itself, are you ready for this, boys and girls? Less deadly. This is a good thing. Why is this not being celebrated? This is what we have understood scientifically since centuries ago. This is what scientists and doctors have always hoped for whenever there has been an infectious outbreak, that eventually the virus would mutate itself to the point that we could simply live with it. And we are living in a time with the anticlonal monobot, with the uh, 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 anticlonal uh, antibody, with the monoclonal antibodies. There, I knew I could spit that out. With the monoclonal antibodies, we have gotten to the place, and with other treatments, which we can't name on here, or YouTube will pull it down saying that I've given out medical disinformation, and we certainly don't want to be guilty of that, um, there is treatments available for people who feel like they want to take the vaccine. That's available. We can now get back to life. There is no reason to shut down, clamp down, or put the hat back on. None whatsoever. And as far as places like New York City still requiring toddlers to be in mass, to go to uh, uh, daycare, four-year-olds in mass. Do you understand that, statistically speaking, under the age of 15, even here in the United States, it's literally one child in one million that this has been fatal for. One child out of every one million. Let that sink in. In certain countries like Sweden... They never required masking, especially among children. And you know how many children they lost during the pandemic? None. None. And again, have we not gone over this ad nauseum, the ridiculousness of 
Those days when you would walk into a restaurant and you had to have your mask on. And then the hostess would seat you. And once you were seated, you could take the mask off. If you got up to go to the bathroom, put the mask back on. It's almost like if you were in the upright position, the virus would get you. But once you were seated, it was like the virus didn't know what to do. Like plexiglass repels it when you would go into convenience stores and places and you'd have to talk to people who were behind plexiglass. I am so glad that where I live, 90% of that nonsense is gone as far as the plexiglass. I can even remember during the first wave and, and everything was in lockdown and stay at home, but you were allowed to go to the grocery store. And you went to the bank, you went to the, the, the drive through at the pharmacy, you went in the supermarket. It was like every employee was like in a hazmat suit. And no longer would they even take your credit or debit card. They would hand you a little mini terminal. And I remember one store I went to, the whole mini terminal was wrapped in saran wrap. And it was a pain, and you'd try to punch it through, and finally, when it would take your card, as soon as you were done, they would take the saran wrap off, spray it, and then put a fresh piece of saran wrap on for the customer behind you. It was it was it was just over the top ridiculous. People were 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 spraying their packages that they received in the mail. I knew one family that they would buy groceries, and other than the immediate perishables that had to get right into the refrigerator, they would leave the other groceries in their car in the garage for a week before they would bring the contaminated rolls of toilet paper and canned goods and loaves of bread into the house. I mean, it was it was over the top insanity and. Yes, Dr. Fauci is responsible for a lot of that fear and, yes, misinformation. And apparently, Howard Stern, the tool, has not been keeping up with the actual science on all of this. He still thinks that it is March of 2020. And he hasn't figured out we're in March 2022. And so he is just being an absolute, uneducated bloviating tool. The wackos are in charge. No. No. The lovers of freedom are in charge. Sane people are, are finally getting heard. And why? Why? Because the Democrats know they're in deep, deep trouble going into the midterm elections. Now, they're not lifting these mandates out of a, a, a revelation. The, the, the truth is, we never had to have most of these mandates to begin with, like, ever. It was purely political. It was designed to hurt Donald Trump. It was designed to kill his presidency, kill the economy, and make the narrative and the drumbeat he had failed on COVID. And then Joe Biden had the magic silver bullet to kill COVID, and he came into office, and it was apparent he had Jack. And now what we have reached is natural herd immunity. The way these viral outbreaks have always worked. Stern lamenting that only 65% of the country's been vaccinated, and he's just he's just incensed by this. Well, Howard, you've been paying attention that people who are jabbed are still getting sick, and they're not getting sick because of a epidemic of the unvaccinated. They're getting sick because... The vaccine did not do as initially promised. Bump, ba -dum -bum. And that is not medical disinformation, because even Dr. Fauci has had to acknowledge, as has the CDC, as has the FDA. Now, I have to say, for sake of YouTube, that the vaccine does slow the spread, and it greatly enhances your chances and ability to not get it. That's the official YouTube disclaimer. So Howard Stern, the man who at one time was the shock jock of the airwaves and everybody tuned in to hear what he, outrageous thing he was going to say next. And now you're just a tool of the establishment reading your approved talking points because you cashed in. Way to go, Grandpa. Can't wait for you to start podcasting from your bed at the nursing home. <laughs>